Hello everyone, my name is Olga. I'm a faculty member at Canadian University Dubai. In addition to this, I'm responsible for reactivating CD trading floor, which was established by Faculty of Management in 2019. And the main purpose of this is to educate our students and give them a chance to meet up with working professionals from the industry. And today in our CD podcast studio, there are two representatives from Freedom Finance Company, Jana and Alexander, uh, who gave a valuable workshop for our students on 3rd of November about global market analytics and fundamental concepts about trading. Welcome, guys, again to our campus. We are so glad to see you. And the first question that I would like to address to you is basically, how did you learn yourself about the trading? And apart from this, could you please describe your experience, the first experience in trading, no matter how it went, actually, whether it was rewarding or maybe not that much? Could you please just talk about this? Jana, can we start from you? Yeah, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting us for this wonderful university. Uh, we are so glad to be here for the second time. So my role uh, actually in the Freedom Finance is a head of institutional partnerships and business development. And obviously, yes, I, I did. <laughs> I had an experience uh, of trading myself. I wouldn't say it was great and successful from the very beginning because obviously you do have a learning curve and uh, um, trading on the demo account and on the real account is quite different. So in the beginning, it was qu quite stressful. Uh, I would say I had a feeling that the market just goes against me. And I can imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, that all my uh, theories and strategies, they just simply doesn't work. So, But then I created some, my own, some strategies, which I start testing and... Uh, Hopefully, I will speak about it later today and give some tips and for the new traders. how did you learn it? Uh, did you end up with a self-starting process or you had a mentor, tutor who was I was you? lucky enough to sit in a one room with the experienced traders and I used to watch on a daily basis how they are analyzing charts and trading. I think it was the best experience ever. This is what I'm saying to my students. The best way to learn is from their working professionals. Yeah, that's why you're here, guys, today. What would you say, Alexander, about your experience? Uh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, um, first of all, uh, good morning. Um, nice to meet you again. And so uh, it was about maybe a few years ago, maybe five or six years ago, it was experience on... Um, on um, crypto exchanges, and so it's just... You're saying it was a long time ago? About five or six years ago, I, th I think. Because um, before, uh, it was just invest. Yeah, it was real estate, it was stocks, and something like this. And if you talk about trading, um, I am just uh, have uh, had first experience in uh, f five years ago, yeah, something like this. And it was a uh, crypto exchange and um, it was some futures. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm just uh, trying to learn it was a um, little experiment. And uh, with a big um, um, with a big credit, it's like... Uh, how leverage. Big, big leverage, mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, about 100 leverage, something like this. <laughs> and the price wall, uh, it was like... Shall I ask you, was it rewarding? Or <laughs> is it going to be a painful question for <laughs> it, you? It, it was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> How did you cope with the disaster? How did you manage to come back to the market and start trading again? But uh, it was just a little experiment. It was for maybe... $100, not so much. It's just uh, for experience, just for show, and that's all. It's just uh, experiment and a lot of uh, deals, a little bit deals, a couple of deals, to understand how it works. That's all. Excellent. And, and um, is, I understand that it's just um, experiment, and that's all. I, I don't believe in this. In If you talk about... Um, for just one time, it 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 needs a lot. It needs a lot of time to be a professional in this uh, type of uh, investing. Investing. Yeah. And I know you have got a brilliant mathematical background. Uh, can we start? Can we make a statement that you have started uh, to work on trading since you were really young kids in in a school time? Um, 
about mathematics, uh, about, um, can you repeat? I guess I remember yeah. this case ah, yeah. because he used to calculate things better ah, than, yeah, yeah, the, than the adults while he used to be just a little boy. You know, everyone used to use calculator and he started doing it just in his brain. Yeah, his I mind, see. Yeah. So That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, of course, it uh, was one of uh, my best, uh, it was my, my favorite um It was your passion, yeah, basically. It, it was my favorite um, thing in school, and so it, it, my favorite lessons, yeah, in school, and so we have uh, a lot of um, uh, a lot of examples how to um, a lot of tasks, yeah, maybe about thousands or ten thousand. It was a really uh, big experience with uh, numbers, really big. It, it was a hours of uh, hours of. Uh, Calculating. I guess yeah. Alexander had a great teacher. That's why he liked the subject. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Because he always uh, told me that if you um, not if you not study, you will be um, like a poor poor guy, yeah, something like this. If we come back to your adult life, um, where did you learn about trading? How how did you start? Did you start doing it yourself or you were guided by any professional like Jana was guided by a professional trader? Mm, it, it's, for me, it's just like a hobby, something like this. I like uh, tasks, I like uh, things uh, that... Um, mm, you learned it yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. By myself, a lot, a lot of uh, books and a lot of um, theories, theories, something like this, because for me, it's, it's interesting. And now... I um, try. I, I told you uh, about theory of uh, theory of games. Some it, it will be like yeah uh, about uh, theory. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's for me. It's just uh, like a passion, and that's all. And that's why I, I think it's uh, one of the options to um, understand how it how works how it works mathematics in um, in real life. Yeah, absolutely. And then. Thank you very much for these replies. And now let's talk about popular myths which exist about trading. Jana, uh, there is a point about trading that stops lots of people to try it, is that to start trading, an individual needs to follow the market 24-7, uh, which is quite exhausted for some people. What would you say about this? I will totally agree with you that uh, this is a myth and uh, it's not, it has nothing to do with the real life. And the, it's a very wise question, and I believe that there is two important factors in this. And the first one is the time frame, and the second one uh, is your experience. Uh, talking about the time frame, uh, you have to decide for yourself, first of all, what's your time frame. Because if you're a day trader, then the candlestick will form in 24 hours, and there is no sense to watch the market and uh, to watch the charts every 30 minutes, every one hour. And uh, on the other side, if let's say uh, you're trading every five minutes, then the candlestick will form every five minutes. And it will be much more time consuming for you to analyze the market. So the statement would be that uh, as, long, as longer is your time frame, as less time you need to spend uh, watching the market. And as lesser is the time frame, then it would be more time consuming for you uh, because you have to take so many decisions. For example, shall you close your position or shall you just uh, try it again and take another order? So, And the second point is the experience because in, in the beginning, all the traders definitely they will look for anything what moves. <laughs> Uh, five minutes, 30 minutes, four hours, one, uh, 24 hours, they will look just for any opportunity. And versus uh, experienced traders, they will be just like a lion who trying to hunt the right moment and uh, take the best out of it. When it comes to experience, in order to become an experienced trader, how do you think, is it can be measured in years of trading or it can be measured in uh, conducted deals? Basically, the volume that uh, the volume of deals that you manage to come up with. It definitely will be measured with the uh, time you're spending in front of the screens and the time you're spending learning new materials, testing your trading strategy. Because if you're taking it in a year, maybe how much time out of this year did you spend actually trading? 
So yeah, I believe it's uh, more into the volume, more into the time you're actually spending uh, in real life trading. Alexander, uh, one of the most popular myths surrounding trading is that to start doing so, people need to have a large funds initially. How do you think about it? Yeah, it's the most popular uh, myth, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Actually, um, I uh, for me, it's uh, every day I heard this from um, different people who have uh, $1,000, um, who have... Uh, uh, about um, hundred dollars, and all of them think like this: that they need a lot of money to start to invest. It's a big myth. You need to t- you need to uh, just um, have some uh, discipline. You need to to practice every every month, and you need to understand if you uh, can um, if you um, can um, work with uh, one dollar. You can work with uh, one million dollar. Yeah, it's something like this. You n- need Definitely. to yeah. You need to understand how it works, and you n- you can start from the a little uh, amount. For example, about maybe one hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's it will be enough. If you talk about stocks for maybe twenty dollars or forty dollars, you can make portfolio from. 15 or 20 uh, stocks, it will be about $300. But still, what do you think? There is a minimum or not? Um, about 300. Uh, about f- I, I'm, for my opinion, we need about 15 or 12 or 20 stocks in portfolio, minimum. Because it's... Uh, um, it's the principle of diversification. Yeah, yeah. it's the principle. Yeah. And so, if you talk about the um, amount, it will be about from... 200 and uh, maybe a little bit higher, maybe 300 or 500 dollars. So you don't like need this. actually to be extremely rich to start yeah. trading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you need discipline. You need to do Financial this. Financial discipline yeah. mainly, yeah. Like in sport, like in business, you need to do this every, um, every week or every month. You need to um, invest one time uh, in month minimum. If, if you, if you want to make a good result after years yeah if you Something continue if we continue talking about trading uh, there is a um, quite popular and well known statement that technical analysis plays a crucial role uh, in order to predict the following market trends and basically no need to go into deep and uh, learn about fundamental analysis what do you think about this? And before you start answering the question, could you please uh, differentiate uh, fundamental analysis and technical analysis? What is the main difference between them? Mm, okay, I understand. <laughs> okay, Maybe Yana can help. So uh, if we will speak about complicated things in a simple words, then the technical analysis, it would be just basically reading the charts. Uh, without paying attention to the news, what's happening in the market, uh, versus fundamental, where you can actually study the history, you need to know what's going on in the market on a daily basis, uh, whether there is a war anywhere in the world which will affect the currencies, obviously, uh, stocks and other things. Yeah, uh, for my opinion, you need to mix uh, this, uh, all these kinds and and so, so if if you sometimes you can use uh, fundamental analysis and sometimes you can use uh, technical i told you but uh, sometimes we have a really good opportunities on the market and if you know some good companies with a good um, uh, reputation with a good reputation uh, with good, a good financial uh, results yeah with a good financial result as with a good um, strategies spreadsheets and yeah and if you know maybe t- how uh, it, it will be about 15 or 12 companies. You're just searching, yeah? And you, uh, find, you, you're waiting for the good moment to, um, uh, to invest. invest. Yeah. And so if you mix uh, these um, uh, technical and fundamental uh, things, it will be more uh, good, uh, more earn, more earn. <laughs> For my Much great expectations, yeah. yeah, you can yeah. put in. It's it's like um, mix uh, strategy, yeah, and it works. Excellent, excellent. And now let's move on and discuss how actually to start trading. 
uh, currently there are so many brokerage and trading companies in the UAE and guys, how to select the right one? This is the question. I'm so glad you asked this question because this is very common in our profession and uh, so many investors and just uh, traders coming across this question, how to select the right one. Specifically, we do we do see the tendency uh, on a yearly basis because we do have in Dubai uh, Forex Expo, for example, and you can see that year by year it's just growing the amount of uh, brokerage firms in the market. I think the most important thing think the trader and the investor they should focus on it the regulation number one and if you're talking about the MENA region or uh, UAE for example then there will be three main uh, regulators uh, in the market which is um, uh, DFSA for the professional traders uh, ESCO which is a central bank license and ADGM in Abu Dhabi this is the most um, most solid and most regulated brokers. But of course, if you are willing to earn more profit and you require a higher, higher leverage, then in this case, maybe you need for a combination where the broker has a uh, different sort of regulation, let's say DFSA and some offshore one like uh, SISIC or the SEMO, which is a Cayman Islands. In this case, you will be able to trade up to, to have a leverage one to 500, for example. And the second, oh. the, the second That's thing you need... Yeah, right. it's obviously only for the professional traders who know what they're doing and not just uh, trying to find the huge volatility uh, and lose their funds quickly. <laughs> so, and the other thing you need to see uh, what sort of instruments you will, lo uh, you will look into and will focus on. Because some brokers, they will have a better spread uh, for uh, Forex for the... Uh, um, uh, currency payers, some some brokers they will do have uh, better conditions, let's say lesser commission for the indices or uh, metals, for example. So it's it's very individual and customized process. Uh, uh, but the, mo the, ma the most important thing is regulation, for sure. Are those lists uh, approved companies by uh, regula regulators on the market? Are they published? Yeah, uh, they are published, and uh, if, for example, we are speaking about DFSA, uh, then you can go just uh, on their website uh, and see all the necessary companies that will be published with the list of activities. Excellent, excellent. And, Alexandra, I would like you to repeat briefly um, those four essential rules that you described during the presentation in our campus on 3rd of November, I think it was extremely valuable for our students. I actually received a really nice feedback. Some students found the answers uh, for the questions. Some students were impressed and they, um, um, it, it was very motivational for them. Uh -huh. So could you please just repeat those rules uh, because we are talking about those who are just about to start trading. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I tr try to remember. <laughs> okay, uh, let <laughs> me remind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. Uh, first of all, you need to use economic cycles. You need to understand um, how economic machine works. Yeah, if you talk about uh, good moments like now, uh, you need uh, to buy a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, second, uh, it's um, you need um, discipline. You need to, to do this every month. Yeah. Regularly. Yeah. Re regularly, yeah. It, it, it's the second uh, rule, and it's, it's simple, but it, but it, it works. Yeah. It always works. If you um, uh, search in different markets, uh, not only stock markets, and you try to make, try to make backtest, you, you, it, your results will be good if you, if you invest every month. And uh, third uh, rule, it's if you talk about um, expected value, is yeah. is a good it's thing. It's necessary to calculate before making any decision. Of course, because if, for example, now the market is about four thousand. Uh, if you talk about SP five hundred, but uh, about months ago it was three thousand six hundred, and uh, people who um, just uh, knew think that is like the same, but it's big difference. It's only ten percent, but it's big difference between uh, uh, between this um, uh, between four thousand and three thousand six hundred. It's a different expected value. 
if you talk about <laughs> 3600 it was a good moment <laughs> but now we need to think because mm-hmm. if if we um, try to predict about the future of the sp500 i think it will be about 4800 or some about 5000 after two years maybe or three years so let me record this <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> just and so if you buy for 3600 it will be about 50 percent of profit yeah but if you buy it for uh, for 4000 it will be just 25 yeah something like this mm-hmm. okay. as a faculty member <laughs> who's teaching statistics i remember the really important rule which was the first one uh, that statistics and probability fe- theory yeah, yeah, play yeah, 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 essential course. role for yeah, yeah. could you please so and emphasize one more time about this aspect. Yeah, uh, it's for uh, for rule about the uh, natural probability. Uh, you need to uh, always use scenarios, different scenarios. You need to decisions. Uh, you, you need to have decisions for every scenario, and you need um, to think like this because ten uh, percent that will be like this. 50% like this scenario and you just ready for for every case just be prepared basically. just be prepared yeah. yeah and you know what you do in this moment for which uh, for each scenario yeah for each, uh, you need to you, you need to, to understand and you need to be ready to, to invest in this moment and uh, you need to know these companies that is pretty much and you need to, to find a good uh, time for this. You also mentioned the principle of universalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, <it's a> f- <laughs> Let me remind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If if you talk about the princip- principles of universalism, it's uh, that you need to be um, always open mind for new things. Because uh, if you talk about uh, markets with the value, um, I think it's a great opportunity to. Um, to find some interesting um, new instrument, yeah, yeah, new, new yeah. instruments, yeah. Because uh, it, like, if you talk about uh, crypto industry, it's it was it was a really good uh, experience. Uh, it was about fifty. It was grow up in fifty times for last five years, and. Uh, for my opinion, we have a big uh, connection between uh, real market like IT uh, industry and blockchain technologies. And so if you talk about uh, opportunities, you need to always uh, open mind for, um, for something new on the market. Yeah, for something new, yeah, of course. Thank you. And Tiana, it's quite well known fact that trading decisions are strongly connected with emotions. What is emotional control for you? And how would you recommend to achieve that emotional control? I think in a trading, it's really essential. Yeah, you're so right that uh, the rule number one for every trader that you shouldn't be emotionally involved. And it happens many times that the people, they once they see that the market goes against them, uh, they will just uh, spend more time trading and trying to revenge and... Uh, be in the green again and instead this they will just end up losing more money and uh, will take wrong decisions so i would speak right now about uh, how you can actually master your trading psychology so i do have interesting few, yeah i would uh, have maybe a few tips for the new traders uh, whenever it, they will take a bad decision or they will have a losing day they will doubt their strategy so I would advise them actually backtest their strategy by the old data, for example, before they will start it. And I think it will be great for them to understand how their strategy would work in the previous data, for example. Was it effective? Was it not effective? Shall they just change it a little bit or should, uh, shall they just continue? Uh, another thing uh, I would suggest is just uh, to implement the star rewarding system for example um, you cannot test your uh, your strategy immediately you know, just by one trade so you need consistently trying and trying so let's say you do have hungry stars to achieve and uh, by by following your strategy you will gain every time one 
by not following your strategy, you will have minus two stars. Okay, so uh, no matter whether it was profitable or not? Uh, exactly, but let's say we can test it on a demo account, for example. Okay. Not necessarily on the, uh, using the real funds and uh, your, re your real money for it. And uh, another thing uh, which is quite creative, I would find, uh, everyone knows the Matrix, Matrix movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I would call it uh, Matrix uh, trick, maybe. So whenever you're in the market and you feel like you got emotionally involved and you're just not following your strategy, in this case, you should ask yourself just one question. Am I following the strategy right now? And if the answer would be no, then immediately you have to exit. Follow, from this matrix. follow the white rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's funny, but uh, you have to play with yourself a game, kind of to be consistent and uh, to achieve your targets and goals. Yeah, and always remember the spoon is not exist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, and uh, uh, the last but not least, it's uh, I would suggest for in for the beginners to have a primary job, so they won't. Uh, the trading uh, wouldn't affect them or affect their families. So they need to have a income, monthly income all the time before they will be professionals. That's a brilliant and nice and beautiful advice from you guys. And thank you very much for uh, reaching our campus again. And so uh, I would like to say thank you to Jana and Alexandru for a brilliant talk and we hope to see you in our campus as soon as possible again. Thank you thank so you much, much, Olga. It's a great pleasure and uh, I hope these ideas and uh, wherever you're giving to your students will help them a lot in the future. I hope so too. Uh, yeah, and actually uh, I'm not kidding about the spoon because <laughs> 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 because uh, if you talk about um, you uh, just if you talk about the prices of the stocks uh, actually, the price is not exist because um, this is a nice insight. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> of the day. no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> because if you talk about good uh, companies with a good result, it doesn't matter about the price. And if w what matters then? Uh, matters is value of the, these companies. If they uh, make a good product, they go good. Uh, they have a good team. I guess this is the next <laughs> topic. <laughs> this Otherwise, is be our we next would topic. never yeah. stop this polemics. <laughs> 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 okay. We can talk for ages about this. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you very much. One thank more you, time. Thank you. Thank you. All Have the best. Have a good day. Thank you.